Hey everybody, Zach Nordyke with you. Uh, we're doing another installment of Zero to a Million. These episodes focus on how you can grow a business from zero to one million dollars in annual revenue. And today's topic is going to be speeding up with AI. Not everything is going to be about direct AI tools. Some of it's just uh, you know thinking through automating processes, uh, but others uh, you know uh, other things that we'll discuss specifically revolve around software tools uh, that leverage AI in different ways to make you as efficient as possible as a, a business leader. So really looking forward to sharing this. Um, I would say out of all the things that I'm going to present, there's only one tool that I have not figured out 100% that I want to share what that is. So my tip today is delegate and automate as much as, as much as you possibly can continue to push yourself to delegate and automate, even when you don't think it's possible, um, as much uh, as much as you can. We have a limited amount of things that we're truly good at, that we're the best at, that we should really be solving and working on. Uh, most of our time is spent way outside of what we're truly the best at, where we have the most influence and make the most impact. So today I'm going to talk about ways that I try to use either automation, delegation, AI, uh, to make things as seamless as possible. It starts uh, for me with a morning routine. On my calendar, um, I have exercise as soon as I get up. It is, has been a difficult process to do this. Um, I, I try to make my morning routine pretty simple. Uh, it's on my calendar, I'm alerted as soon as I wake up to go and do this, and it's workout. I don't eat breakfast. Um, that's just a personal preference. I'm not saying that's good or bad. The first thing I do is I get up, brush my teeth, drink some water, uh, go out uh, into kind of natural air, natural light. Um, I take a certain amount of really deep breaths, drink a certain amount of water, and then I work out for usually... 30 to 45 minutes combination of strength training and running, but it's automated. It's seven days a week for me. And it's not so much AI focused, uh, but it's on my calendar. And I also wear uh, a watch and I actively look at how many activity minutes I'm generating. My goal is 60 minutes. I don't get the 60 minutes during my morning workout alone. It's, it takes more than that. I, I get, you know, somewhere between, 30, uh, 30, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of activity that counts. I'm working out for longer than that, but the watch only counts uh, when your heart's at a certain uh, beats per minute level. So I push myself to have the same morning, seven days a week, get up, brush my teeth, drink water, do some deep breathing outside, even if it's cold, get myself kind of going, get into the weight room, put in 30, 40 minutes of work, knowing that I'm going to get 20 or 30 minutes of activity on my watch. And I really let uh, the watch uh, be my guide for have I been active enough that day. So it's automated because I don't take the days off um, for doing it. Seven days a week, I know how I'm going to get up and I know what's going to go down. So like when I'm, um, I don't have to really think about my morning. There's not food to prepare. It's not a certain way to dress. I just kind of have workout clothes, literally, um, you know, kind of ready to go. Just uh, have to toss them on real quick. Everything is seamless. And I think I bring AI into this only because I like to track uh, in a week how many times I've gotten to 60 minutes of activity according to the watch. Not that it's AI driven, but I do uh, use a software or just the, you know, the, the uh, software that comes with the uh, Apple watch to track my output. I don't try to measure it with just pure minutes, try to let the watch um, be the gauge for that. So that's my morning routine. That's how I stay uh, focused on this. And you might say, hey, what does this have to do with running a company? If you're going to kind of endure all the stress that you um, take on by leading others, by building a business, by um, just dealing with all the challenges that come with running an early stage business that you're trying to grow, you got to really be routined, I think, and uh, leverage 
uh, as much tech as possible. Here's another thing that I do during my workout and other periods of the day. I read, but I, I don't necessarily read. I have things read to me. The AirPods are just such a super helpful way of uh, consuming great information where I guess you can choose for it to be great information. Takes me no time at all. The AirPods have been charging all night, toss them in. Um, and I have the fantastic luxury of having a great uh, assistant that works with me. She's constantly um, going on, on chat and figuring out like what are the top uh, books on business and entrepreneurship and even science and innovation, et cetera, et cetera. She knows that as soon as I've read through, or not even read through, but listened through, reading, I guess, through listening to books, uh, to purchase more. I never have to kind of go fishing around for content. Not that it's hard between YouTube and Spotify and Audible. I mean, there's just, uh, I mean, light years of content on there in every uh, field imaginable. But I think your reading can be automated. Um, you, you've got to just kind of stock your library. Um, and I think, again, not that I'm opposed to actually reading material, sometimes that's uh, a must, but automate your reading, build it in um, as part of my daily routine when I'm, I'm doing my workout, 30, 40 minutes, whatever it ends up being, I'm always listening to a book and I'm further accelerating it by listening to it at a speed that's less than, or I'm sorry, that's greater than um, just kind of the baseline reading rate. I like to play it at a quicker tempo because it helps me really have to concentrate. Some people, uh, you know, probably find that distracting. It helps me lock in more, but without the AirPods, without Audible, which is my main source for um, full length books, uh, reading wouldn't be uh, as much of a rhythm in my day. So I strongly suggest have someone, even if it's uh, a spouse, go on your Audible. Don't trust yourself to fill it up, but like, have them buy the books for you ahead of time. Just put your credit card in there. Let somebody buy it. Make sure that when you're doing a repetitive task like exercise or something that might not absorb all your uh, mental powers that you are reading and that's an automated part of your day. And I, I can't suggest these enough. And I, uh, it's not an endorsement for AirPods per se, but just have um, some type of easy wireless headphone that's not clunky, that's easy to um, uh, that's easy to just put in your ears and go so you can be fed that information as you're doing something else. I, I just can't recommend it enough. I think it is a part of being healthy that you're always kind of consuming new information and you're making it easy for yourself to do it. Again, I'm a slower reader. Uh, I'm sure if anybody's watched uh, these videos, you've heard me say things like this. Um, I don't consider myself to be like an excellent reader or just like I, I like when um, things are read to me and this just helps me automate and I love audible uh, I love a ton of different podcasts on Spotify I even like um, blink uh, reading blinks on Blinkist uh, not reading but having them um, uh, read to me in audio format this is a great consumption device I automate the process by having my assistant uh, basically keep the um, uh, my Audible library shelves packed uh, with stuff. Um, I couldn't recommend listening to books more. Couldn't recommend listening to uh, those books on a wireless headphone more. Just finding a way every single day to make it part of your rhythm, I think, is so huge. To-dos. This is something that um, I think is key. I think it's really important to have weekly to-dos and daily to-dos. Uh, I think sometimes um, there's a sentiment that a to-do list doesn't mean that you're being productive. It just means that you're doing kind of administrivia or pointless tasks. I think you have to be very um, discerning with your to-do. Uh, I, I will give an endorsement. There is um, a software, and it's for the desktop at this point. Uh, it's called Before Sunset. I think it's a really great way of, uh, it's an AI generated or it, can, uh, it uses AI to take the, the to-dos you have 
and it can link with your Google Calendar, or whatever um, calendar you use, obviously a digital calendar, and it can help project how much time it's going to take to do that um, item that's on your to-do list. And it puts it on your calendar. So you don't even have to think like, when am I going to do this? I love it because it kind of sequences your day for you. Um, and another thing with to-dos, I always spend time uh, on Saturday uh, with my assistant who does such a great job, uh, you know, uh, working with me. But we spend Saturdays thinking about it, sometimes debating like what will be the best usage of time uh, during this week. And I'm really grateful for that. So I have a Monday morning action plan and an everyday to do's. And I do uh, utilize uh, before sunset uh, to kind of expedite that. Um, I, I think that it's uh, a really helpful uh, tool to to kind of map things out and plan things. So speaking of AI, that's that's one of the usages. Videos. I do these videos. They're long form videos where I talk and probably talk too much on each topic, but I'm just really passionate about it. But um, we've come across an AI tool called Opus. Uh, Opus takes long form content. It uh, splits it into shorts, you know, uh, I think on average 60 seconds or less. Um, it really, it, sometimes it's less than 60 seconds, but uh, Opus, I think it's Opus Pro is the URL, maybe opuspro.ai. Uh, but Opus is such a phenomenal tool, not only for chopping uh, long form content into shorts, but it also ranks um, how uh, engaging it believes the content will be because it um, creates uh, a script uh, or basically it creates what I'll call closed captioning, like uh, the ability uh, for everything you're said to be captioned. And it knows based on what you're saying. Uh, roughly how engaging it will be. And I think it scores it from zero, not engaging at all to 99, very engaging. So it's just really a cool thing. And it adds in the captions, as I mentioned, into the video and it adds in the emojis and it makes uh, your shorts more compelling automatically. So it's uh, a really phenomenal tool for that. ClipChamp is another thing that I use. Uh, you can take a long form video. It has uh, an AI component uh, they can edit it for you. Um, so I think it's really cool, even when you have a video like this, uh, that, you know, you don't have to spend, obviously you have to be careful on how the AI edits, but, you know, whether it's a long form video that needs some polishing or short form content that you want to clip out of uh, something longer that you've done, Opus and ClipChamp are go-tos for me. Um, meetings. I am so terrible uh, at taking notes while meeting for whatever reason. And I think a lot of other people are very good at doing both and doing it in a way that doesn't feel uh, distracting at taking notes. I get really pumped up about trying to listen to what people are saying and having a dialogue. And for whatever reason, my brain won't allow me to listen to the way I want to and take notes the way I want to. Uh, I use a tool called Fathom uh, to um, take notes out of, through AI during my meetings. So I think that Fathom is such a wonderful tool because it records the meeting. It can summarize the meeting. It has a full transcript or at least a full transcript based on what the AI believes it hears. And as soon as the meeting ends, you can um, send uh, the whole transcript, video, and summary to the participants really with one click. It's just such a great tool. And this isn't necessarily for meetings, but I think it can make uh, meeting maybe on certain topics less needed. Uh, Loom. I'm a big fan of Loom. I love the way Loom um, captures what you're clicking on um, just to get better context. Loom allows uh, a person to basically make an instructional video uh, if they're doing a digital task and it picks up on what you're doing um, in your, your walkthrough, your digital walkthrough, whether it's how to, I don't know, teach a new team member uh, how to use Slack and all the channels on Slack or how to log into something specific and 
take certain actions on uh, a piece of software that your your organization's using or whatever it is you're trying to teach. It's picking up on all the mouse clicks. It's picking up on uh, basically all the steps. It's automating to a large degree uh, what a lot of people refer to as a standard operating procedure. Obviously, it has to be digital for it to be maximally effective, but um, between Fathom uh, to record Zoom meetings and take notes and summarize Zoom meetings, love it because I'm so bad at taking my own notes during the meeting. Often when the meeting's over, I'm, uh, I can sometimes, when I remember, uh, you know, uh, take my own notes and send them off to whomever I'm meeting with. But I love uh, the ability to have an artificial intelligence system uh, capture what's being said during the meeting. It's just so much more accurate than what your memory, even if you have good recall, uh, can do. And then I'm a big fan of Loom. Again, um, I just think that it's super helpful when you're making a walkthrough or an operating procedure that you don't have to do the video and then create a separate write-out for the steps you took. It's melding it into one thing. And the cool thing is the video is instantly ready when you stop recording. Uh, there's not even a render process or not one that I'm uh, that I've seen. Maybe it will take a millisecond for it to, uh, you know, before you can click and send it out. But I've never even seen that. Just the instantaneous creation of information that others can consume and use. Uh, phenomenal. Messaging. This is the one area where I think that I am needing to uh, like I need to do a much better job. Um, I have a lot of solutions. Certainly feel free to comment if you found some great solutions. Uh, I'm fascinated with a tool called Superhuman. Um, supposedly, it can read your email messages and help formulate responses. Not that that's not even, uh, you know, uh, readily available with other tools, but this tool, Superhuman, I'm interested um, in the way it can allow you to respond to emails faster just through AI-generated responses, uh, summaries of what's been sent to you. I think that's cool. Not used it. Uh, just fascinated with speeding up all the messages I get on a variety of platforms. I'm sure if you own a business, you probably are communicating with people through text message, through phone calls, through WhatsApp, through Slack, through Zoom, through name, you know, uh, name other uh, email, of course. Uh, through comments on a Google Doc. You know, I'm just probably um, naming uh, a large amount of the sources that, are, uh, that we're communicating with. But I know that for me, it's a bit frustrating and it feels like a waste of time that I'm going to all these different uh, platforms to get messages. It's all text. It's all the same stuff. It's just it feels very decentralized in a non-productive way. Uh, I've seen a tool called the GIST AI, and it's just kind of this uh, aggregated pot of all the, uh, so, uh, all your messaging sources, your Slacks, your WhatsApps, uh, your email, your, um, uh, name the other messaging platforms, uh, and it brings it all together. It summarizes it. You can have auto responders. You can have emails that only have certain subject lines or certain content inside filtered in. I think that I spend a lot of time, and maybe this is relatable, maybe it isn't, uh, but I spend a lot of time just kind of opening apps and looking at different messages. And it feels very, um, it feels just very kind of spaced out and decentralized and chaotic. If any, if I could spend less time looking at messages and responding to messages that are simplistic and more time thinking about ones that are needing a more thoughtful response in one space, that would be huge. You know, and again, uh, I've looked at um, Zapier. Uh, I've looked at Bardeen to maybe make Slack the one-stop shop for all these I think it's a hard uh, challenge to solve, but I know one of the great time usages of my day, not productive, uh, is kind of what I'll call hunting around my phone or computer for the various spaces I get messaging. 
I know that that's a challenge I'd like to solve for myself. And I have a bunch of thesis on best solutions, but I think it's something for uh, any business owner who believes they're maybe spending an inordinate amount of time responding to messages. And this is even with the help of a great assistant for me, um, there's probably a better way to do it. I know I, I've uh, not shared a, a single solution, but I would recommend evaluating superhuman, evaluating the gist AI, evaluating how Bardeen could automate uh, the, the places messages appear or Zapier or another um, tool that can allow for automation. There's a bunch of different approaches you could take. Love to hear from anybody uh, watching this who has uh, implemented a solution, how effective that's been. And, you know, uh, I'm sure that there's a hundred ways to uh, integrate open AI tools uh, into this as well that I'm just not even touched on. I know not all of these are AI focused automations, delegations, and solutions, but you're getting a blend of AI and a blend of um, speeding different, what I'll call key tasks to be as efficient and as effective as an executive uh, as possible. So speed up with AI, speed up with other ways of delegating and automating, and until next time, be healthy. I wish you the best success on your journey from zero to a million. Thank you so much.